All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Swaggy here. It's currently August 27th, Tuesday, which means that the Colts had to cut their roster down to 53. Just because we cut a guy does not mean they won't be on our practice squad. So when you hear me say they cut someone that I don't think they should have cut, doesn't mean they're not returning. So just keep that in mind because obviously I'm not Chris Ballard or Shane Steichen, so I don't know what's going to happen. But for a quarterback room, we are running three quarterbacks with Richardson, Flacco, and Ellinger. To me, I don't know how much sense this makes. With the new NFL rules, you basically get a free quarterback. So why we're keeping Ellinger, I didn't think he is the best. Like preseason, I thought he was pretty solid, but I know Steichen likes him a lot. And of course, if Steichen is high in him, then I'll just have to take his word for it because Steichen knows a lot about football. So we're running out three quarterbacks. That's cool. In terms of our running back room, Definitely disappointed that Xavier Scott didn't make it. I thought he looked good in the preseason. Evan Hull also didn't make it, a guy who I think has potential. We are going with Jonathan Taylor, Trey Sermon, and Tyler Goodson, so no Demetric Felton. Interesting, definitely interesting. Sermon is as good as it gets as a running back, too. I thought he looked good for us last year. Yeah, he's not Zach Moss, but, I mean, Moss is not a backup running back. He's starting for the... Who is he starting for? The Bengals, right? Yeah, he's starting for the Bengals for a reason. And then Tyler Goodson, when I think of Tyler Goodson, I think of the obvious, I'm not going to say it, but hopefully he can continue to you know, be our receiving back and step up for us. Uh, receivers, I was surprised by this because Ashton Doolin made it, but again, Steichen's high on Doolin, so if the coach is high on a guy, he's going to make the roster. No Laquan Treadbill. This was not a surprise to me, but... I think Treadwell could have offered a lot to our roster, but it's looking like we're going to go with Downs, Doolin, Anthony Gould, Adonai Mitchell, Alec Pierce, and Michael Pittman Jr. I do think our wide receiver room has a lot of potential. Pittman, can he establish himself as a wide receiver one this year? Last season went over 1,100 yards. This season, can he get even better? Uh, A.D. Mitchell is a guy who is electric. We know that. His speed, his route running is just on a different level for a rookie. And then Josh Downs is a guy who I know a lot of Colts fans, including myself, are high on. Downs might play week one. I'll keep you guys updated. We're not exactly sure. I don't think we need to rush him out there, though. I'd rather have us lose week one than rush you know, Josh Downs back. And let's say we do win, but then he re-aggravates something. Like, I'd rather just... I'm not saying we're going to lose uh, Josh Downs, but I don't think we need to be rushing guys back. It's a long season. And the Colts have a soft schedule, right? So... It's not the end of the world, man, if we get off to the slowest start. Like, the Colts were 3-5 and five last year, but I don't think we're going to get off to a slow start. It's not easy our first four games. We're facing off, like, what, Steelers, Bengal, uh, Steelers, Bears, uh, Texans, and Packers. Not in any particular order, but we'll see what happens, man. I, honestly, I do think we're going to get off to a strong start, man. I do think we'll end up winning probably three of the first four games. Houston, that's a game we just got to get, man, after what happened last year. I'm just listening to some of the Colts players saying that that's a personal game. Shane Steichen saying he thinks about it all the time. He spent all summer thinking about that game. Of course, week 18. And we've got to find a way to beat Houston in week one. And then in terms of Green Bay, I mean, that's a game that could go either way. Week three and week four, that's Steelers. And actually, I think we play against the, the yeah, it's Bears and then Steelers. We've got to beat the Steelers at home. The Bears, again, like, I don't see a reason why we would be losing to the Bears at home. Yeah, the Bears look pretty promising, but protect home field, man. So, Chicago, they've got to prove it to me. So, and in terms of tight end, obviously, guys, Jelani Woods is out for the season, which is just awful. I don't know other way to put it. I, I love me some Jelani Woods. He looked an improved blocker in the preseason. We know he's electric with that size and speed. Man, he can't stay healthy. I'm fully off of Jelani Woods, which is just, like I said, devastating. But Mo Ali Cox, Kylan Granson, Will Mallory, Drew Ogletree. I don't think Mallory would have even made the roster if it hadn't been for the Jelani Woods injury. But that's just my opinion. Offensive line, Tanner Bornellini, Blake Freeland. No clue how Freeland made it. Will Fries, Matt Concalves, Ryan Kelly, Quentin Nelson, Danny Pinner, Bernard Ryman, Braden Smith, and Dalton Tucker. Our line looks incredible. And then our defense. So defensive line... Let me look at it. Tevin Bryan, another interesting guy. Adetamu, Adabari, DeForest Buckner, Roquan Davis, Isaiah Land, Layatulatu, Taekwon Lewis, Dio Ding, Bokuti Pei, Grover Stewart. No surprises there. I mean, I think you could argue that uh, a surprise could be Tevin Bryan, but like whatever. Linebackers, Jalen Carlees, Zaire Franklin, Shinguna Luby, EJ Speed, Grant Stewart. Linebackers look great. We've got Zaire Franklin is one of the best in the game. EJ Speed's very good. Stewart's more of a special teams guy. 
And then we've got uh, the young rookie, of course. And then we've got Shingun Alubi, who I think is going to break out this season. Cornerback, Daryl Baker, Juju Brents, Dallas Flowers, Jalen Jones, Kenny Moore the second. Secondary is completely hit or miss. I think it's either going to be very good or very bad. Kenny Moore is an all-pro level nickel. The rest of that is just question marks. Flowers coming off a major injury. Baker's like, okay. Look good. I thought he looked pretty good in camp. But again, like, am I trusting Daryl Baker to go out there against the AFC? Like, come on. Juju Brands, can he stay healthy? And then Jalen Jones is just, can he be consistent? Basically, safety, Julian Blackman, Nick Cross, Trevor Dembo, and Ronnie Thomas the second. So no, wow, no Ronnie Harrison. That's absolutely shocking how he did not make it. Second time the Colts have cut him. He could end up coming back, but I, I don't know to this point, man. That's an absolutely shocking cut. That's as shocking as it gets. And then you've got uh, special teams as Matt Gay, Luke Rhodes, who's the long snapper, and Rigoberto Sanchez. We're not carrying two kickers. I don't think teams carry two kickers. Uh, Matt Gay, if he gets off to a slow start, I'm going to be panicking with that contract we gave him. Of course, at the end of last season, was not great. Missed a couple of kicks in the preseason. But, yeah, I, don't, I think the only, the only two surprises to me are Ronnie Harrison – and then at the quarterback position, I'm sh- I'm not shocked that we kept Ellinger, like, but it's also the fact that, I mean, Jason Bean looked good. Like Jason Bean was one of the best rookie quarterbacks in the preseason. Um, I don't know how he. I think I honestly would prefer him over Ellinger. Like if Ellinger ever had to start a game for us, I'm basically betting money on the other team winning that. Ellinger's just I don't know. Steichen likes him, so I'll give Steichen the benefit of the doubt. But I've just never been a big Sam Ellinger guy, to be honest with you. Let's just say Richardson and Flacco were both not available. I'd go sign a free agent more than I would trust Ellinger, even though he knows the offense. But um, Jason Bean at least gives you that those legs. Like, he's pretty electric. So, but yeah, outside of that, guys, we're less than two weeks away from week one against the Houston Texans. I'm just so fired up. I'm fired up. I can't stop watching Colts YouTube videos. I can't stop reading Colts articles. The reason why I'm so fired up is because everyone has no faith in us. And there's always more to it when teams are picking Houston, they're picking the Titans, they're picking Jacksonville to beat you. No one expects the Colts to do anything this year. And it's just hilarious how they glaze the Texans and say they're a Super Bowl contender. But the Colts were 15 yards away from beating the Texans and knocking them, of course, from going to the playoffs with Gardner Minshew. And another thing that's crazy is the, the Anthony Richardson hate. I mean, Gardner Minshew, in what world is he a better quarterback than Anthony Richardson? You know, Minshew, yeah, what, five, 15 touchdowns, nine interceptions, but Minshew didn't give you much mobility. Uh, yeah, sure, he had some rushing touchdowns, he moved in the pocket, but Richardson, I mean, this guy has all the physical tools. You can tell that he can read a defense too, right? This isn't a Justin Fields situation. It, Richardson, he's picking up blitzes, he knows where to go with the football. It's just, can he put it on target? Can Richardson be accurate? But accuracy is something that you can improve, right? You can't teach the IQ that Richardson has. You can't teach his arm talent. You can't teach his speed and his agility. I mean, good luck stopping Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson in the run game. And then on top of that, you've got to deal with A.D. Mitchell, Michael Pittman Jr., Josh Downs, uh, Alec Pierce, and then these tight ends. I mean, good luck, man. 